Hello, Craig. Thank you for joining us at Theatre Art Life for a quick chat about your current project. It's a pleasure. Lovely to be here. Uh, for everyone who doesn't know Craig Leo, he is a puppeteer for Handspring Puppets. Is that your official role or title? What would you call yourself, Craig? Um, I'm, I'm a puppeteer. I'm also the, one of the associate directors um, of puppetry for the company. Mm -hmm. um, so that, that covers a little bit of everything, really. And how long have you worked with Handspring? Gosh, that's a good question. It must be uh, going on 16 years now. Wow, yeah. amazing. Yeah. I wanted to talk yeah. to you today particularly about your Little Amal project, but before we get started, I'm going to run the amazing video that you sent us because I think it sets the scene of uh, this project. So let's take a look. Uh, I can see it too. Good. amazing project. <laughs> <laughs> so Craig, how did you get involved with the Little Lamar Walk and what's your role on it uh, in terms of a director and puppeteer? Um, so uh, I got involved um, partly because of my association with Handspring, but um, I also have been a stilt walker for a very long time. And the, the um, combination of puppetry and stilt walking um, went really well together. I um, previously did a production with Handspring called Tall Horse, which involved a, a very large life-size giraffe. Um, and it was a similar situation where puppeteers were on stilts, but then also having to deal with um, a very tall structure. Um, and I think just the experience that I have with that meant that I could test the idea initially because it, mm. it you know, in this idea of like a three and a half meter high puppet operated by somebody on stilts they just weren't sure if it was possible um and then basil and adrian called me from handspring they said do you think we could do this i said absolutely we can do this i don't think it'll be a problem at all um and there she is walking so and so there's one person inside and then a couple Correct. of people around like how many people does it take to operate the puppet so uh in total depending on conditions uh if if the the road and the path is smooth and the wind is not blowing or howling uh three people will operate her there's the option for a fourth person there's a, a support rod at the back that goes from the center between her shoulder blades down to the floor which is a stability mechanism um in case we we deal with um very strong winds because uh, you know when you're up there in that puppet, um, even the slightest breeze, you feel very strongly. Mm. So, um, it, yeah, so in, you know, four people max, three people minimum. That's amazing. And you, I saw in one part of the video, she's got 
control over her eyes like what 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 control of of the puppet is is uh controllable from within inside so it's the eyes is there anything else okay. yes yeah, so um what you have is you have the two arm puppeteers on the outside then the stilt walker has to um not only negotiate the stilt walking and the weight and the balance of the puppet but inside of that body you've got two controls well we call it a harp it's like playing a harp so in front of you, you've got two controls and on those controls, if you pull up and down, it takes the head left and right. Mm -hmm. um, you have another little control that takes it up and down. So the head can do this kind of action. We have another little control that is specifically for um, the mouth, which will just, it can lift, uh, lift the top of lip and then drop the jaw. So she can have a little smile or she can, she can have a fright. React. And then the, the, and then the eyes are on one of the controls. It's a tiny little button. It's the only bit of um, tech, really high tech on the puppet, uh, electronic um, uh, little button that um, is relayed to a computer, tiny little computer that then controls the eye movement. Wow. Um, and that has uh, very cleverly been um, powered by a very simple, um, almost like your cell phone charger that you get now, these portable cell phone chargers. So it's plugged into a battery, tiny little mm -hmm. battery that sits at the back. So there's quite a lot going on in there. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And, but and the idea is that that becomes second nature. You know, this, this you will stop thinking about eventually because you'll know exactly what you're doing. You know where things are. And it just becomes a secondary um, action. Yeah, yeah. And so she's got a longer walk ahead of her. So I'm sure it's just not you that's going to be walking the puppet. Uh, how big are the teams that are going to walk the puppet across uh, across the continents? So we have it, uh, a group of uh, 10 people that, that will manipulate her mm -hmm. um, in addition to... Uh, obviously the, the support team, the production team, the logistics people, but it's three teams of three with an extra person who's on the outside to assist with the direction, the puppetry mm -hmm. direction, and those teams will relay. So at the moment we're not, uh, we're looking at possibly each team being in the puppet for about 40 minutes mm -hmm. for big events. Walking is a different situation, um, depending on the t on the terrain, um, and I'm absolutely convinced that we'll be able to push that length of time up as people get um, stronger and fitter. Mm. Yeah. And do they rotate their roles, or is like they're only three still walkers, or <laughs> or does everybody yeah. do a bit of everything? That's the idea. Yes, eventually. So at the moment, what's really fun and quite bizarre is I am doing I'm in Cape Town but I'm doing stilt classes online with some wow. of the um, puppeteers who will be joining us so we have um, in uh, Paris we have a young gentleman called Moyad who is uh, has a refugee background he's living in Paris um, and with lockdown and everything he's he's we've sent him his stilts He's got them on and he's in his room and we're doing exercises and kind of, um, <laughs> he's running. We have another lo lovely lady in Jaffa called uh, Fida mm -hmm. and she's also been learning. Um, the other stilt walkers that are or puppeteer stilt walkers, we've, we've managed to work with them um, pre-COVID. So we, I already got them up and running with their walking and they go shopping and some of them go walking in in parks and stuff i've got hysterical photographs of friends of mine who've just um it was part of the cast who have literally gone to tesco's on their stilts they're just doing everything on them just to get <laughs> really really proficient so there's been some really funny moments but yes everyone theoretically should be able to be inside the puppets as well and i guess there's there's one part of it that is the technical capability of doing that but embodying a puppet is a lot more than just the technical capability how do you especially maybe in this time uh train the the soft the softness of, of becoming a, a refugee girl as a puppet that's a very good question um you know with we we haven't actually got there yet and i think it's something that we will discover along the way. We're working with an extraordinary um, director called um, uh, Nizar Zouabi, um, 
and we are, we know, we're going to discover what her character is. We need to learn all of that stuff. So when we go into rehearsals, we will discover more about um, who she really is. Mm. Um, what we do know is that Good Chance have been incredible in that they're working with a child psychologist who has been looking at the route that a little girl would make from Syria and the journey and where, when is she afraid? When is she tired? When does she just, you know, a little nine-year-old girl, when does she just put her foot down and go, I'm not doing this anymore? You know, so mm. there's a whole character development that will will be in, will inform us. Um, and I think for the to start off, what we need to get um, out of the way is the technical thing, so that we can start becoming the character of the little girl. Mm. Um, of course, as she moves through different countries, there are different um, uh, circumstances and environments. And because she is represented and she is being portrayed as a, a real live little girl, she will need to respond to the, the various um, circumstances as they come up. So even things like COVID, like traveling through countries, people ask, well, what happens if you cancel a gig? Well, a little girl walking through Europe will have to make a plan if she can't cross the border and she might have to go another route. So all of these things are being factored in, mm. um, which I think makes for a really, really exciting, beautiful uh, project. I love that. It is one big, huge artistic journey that evolves as it goes along. Uh, it's epic. It's absolutely extraordinary. Um, uh, yeah, I, I think that the trickiest thing for the puppeteers at the moment, it's also partly technical, but particularly the person inside who is operating all of her facial expressions, they can't see the face. Mm. You know, they don't have a little video camera in there that shows her shows them what she's doing with her features. So part of the um, the real challenge for the stilt walker puppeteer inside is knowing at all times what her face is doing, um, mm. understanding and being able to imagine what is happening at the top and what you're doing with your controls is actually being read as as, as the correct um, emotional state or expression that you're trying to portray and get across. Um, that's going to be <laughs> quite interesting to to uh, get right, I think. Yeah, wow. And are you going to be one of the people walking or are you going to hand I'm, that to I'm, somebody? I am um, going to do some of the journey with them. Um, as puppetry director, I, I theoretically shouldn't be in her. I should be outside watching as much <laughs> as I'd love to. Mm -hmm. I'd love to be in her all the way. You yeah. have to fight me to get me out of there. <laughs> but um, I'll just I'll be joining I'll do the full rehearsal process and then I will walk um, through Turkey and through Greece right and then I will let go probably with them huge tears in my eyes as they continue their journey and then I will rejoin them in Manchester yeah well what a wonderful mission isn't it yeah it's just uh, it's like a gift uh, to me it's a gift um, I think that the entire you know what it says is phenomenal um, as a piece of public art, um, mm -hmm. bringing focus not only to humanity, but also to the plight of young refugee children all over the world. Um, and the fact that communities, the response from communities, you know, in these little towns that we go to have, have has been extraordinary. Um, uh, they've come up with all kinds of wonderful inventive creative ways to welcome little Amal into their towns and into their homes and into their communities she'll be visiting um uh refugee camps along the way there'll be workshops there'll be you know she will also leave a certain um, a legacy behind her uh something that uh, there's a whole nother um stream a whole nother parallel stream that that is running alongside the movement of this puppet through europe that is about um giving back uh, and leaving something behind mm. so that's i mean that's a whole other department which i'm not that privy to all the information but i know it's going on um and, and that is very special too yeah and i think just also on the back end of us all still dealing with a global pandemic it's just a a, a wonderful thing to look forward to i guess and and uh, and and the fact that we're all in this humanity together I, you know and that this mission and this is a big uh journey to demonstrate that that we're all connected and i think that's beautiful yeah it is i mean i think it's also um it's this whole uh kind of 
you know, with theatres closing again and people going back into lockdown in Europe, I think um, what's great about this project is that it, as far as we know so far, it can continue, it can go ahead because it's it's firstly free, it's a public space, it's outdoors, it's easy to manage uh, in terms of keep, keeping people, people can social distance, we don't have people crammed into theatres. Mm. Um, So, so luckily, um, it feels like there will be a great, big, beautiful piece of public art that won't get cancelled, yes. <laughs> hopefully, and will continue no matter what. Um, and I'm, I'm very, very excited to um, and very proud to be a part of it. Yes. Well, thank you so much for uh, giving us an insider look to Little Amal's journey. And I'm sure the world will be watching you uh, come April when uh, you start this journey across across to uh, the UK. So good luck. Good luck for the project. Thank you so much, Anna. Uh -huh.